Kwame Kilpatrick. This is the fight of my life. Preparing for battle. The federal government. The culture of corruption is over. Ready to unleash an explosive case years in the making. Less than a decade ago, he was a rising star in the Democratic Party. I dared mighty things for the citizens of my city. He was the new hope for the Motor City. To rise up! To rise up! And then came scandal. Do you owe him an apology? After scandal? I don't whore around on my wife. After scandal? We charged Kwame Kilpatrick with perjury. And it all came crashing down. I lied under oath. But what you saw unfolding in front of the camera might not compare to what unfolds over the next several months. Tonight, Seven takes you deep inside the corruption case. You will hear from the key players. Y'all made me criminal. We uncover exclusive new information. New Scott had to come in with something. In the biggest trial this city has ever seen. This is a Seven Action News special report inside the Kilpatrick corruption case. Just eight years ago, they were chanting his name at the Democratic National Convention. Tonight, as the 2012 convention is already underway, Kwame Kilpatrick is far removed from the political spotlight. Yeah, instead of preparing speeches, he's preparing for trial on charges that could cost him his freedom. Kwame Kilpatrick, his father Bernard Kilpatrick, his longtime friend Bobby Ferguson, and former Water Department head Victor Mercado will answer accusations that they ran a criminal enterprise right out of the mayor's office. Tonight, our entire 7 Action News investigative team breaks this story down for you. We're going to give you a deeper look at all four men, how they got to this point, where they are now, and what they face in the coming months. But first, we're going to take a closer look at all of the charges. Yeah, this is a complex case, but it's one that fits together like a puzzle. The feds are alleging Kwame Kilpatrick, his good friend Bobby Ferguson, city water director Victor Mercado, and Kilpatrick's father Bernard Kilpatrick, profited millions from a criminal enterprise. Here's how the feds say the complicated puzzle fit together. At the center of much of this is Bobby Ferguson, who owns construction and demolition companies. Feds say contractors doing business with the city of Detroit were coerced to include Ferguson as a subcontractor before during and after getting a contract. Many, but not all, gave in. Some of the influence, prosecutors say, came from the top, Kwame Kilpatrick himself, and from Mercado on expensive water and sewer projects. Ferguson got a piece of those projects. Bernard Kilpatrick was allegedly in on the payoffs as a consultant who contractors had to go through to do city business, and he benefited simply as the mayor's daddy. Three nonprofits were allegedly used to funnel some of the money from Ferguson to Kwame Kilpatrick, Bernard Kilpatrick, and the rest of the first family. The feds documented cash, trips, golf, and yoga lessons for Kilpatrick, summer camp for his kids, a crisis manager, and anti-bugging equipment right before he resigned in 2008, and an attempt to buy furniture from the Manoogian Mansion Restoration Society. Kilpatrick told 7 Action News he was shocked when he saw the phrase Kilpatrick Enterprise in the indictment. When I first saw it, I, I, I thought it was absolutely ridiculous and it could not be discussing me. I think it's politically motivated and I think it's something that I gotta fight through, but I'm gonna fight very hard, I'm very engaged, and I'm very tenacious about uh, making sure that the truth gets out there. And that's really how this legal puzzle fits together, but how did Kwame Kilpatrick's career fall apart? Well, investigator Heather Catalo joins us now, and Heather has certainly began with a lot of promise. From standing arm in arm with future President Barack Obama to spending months behind bars, Kilpatrick's flame once burned bright, but ended in disgrace with an apology and a promise to return. At the age of just 31, Kwame Kilpatrick defeated popular city council president Gil Hill and became a rising star in the Democratic Party. His potential for Detroit seemed unlimited, and he had many believing the same for the city. Now it's time for all of us to rise up and begin our future right here, right now. He was a mayor who touted himself as the ultimate family man. There's no way I can be a true leader of the city of Detroit if I don't lead in my own house. But just months into his first term, Kilpatrick seemed seduced by the trappings of power. He traveled with rock star style entourages, a security detail more appropriate for a president than a mayor. And news reports exposed Kilpatrick for charging pricey meals and exotic hotel rooms on his city-issued credit card. He was going to stay at very fancy hotels when he went out of town, like the Four Seasons, and 
r racking up $500 spa visits. But after the 7 Action News investigators exposed the pricey red Lincoln Navigator leased for Kilpatrick's wife for 24 grand a year, that became a symbol of excess at a time when he was asking others to tighten their belts. But these are difficult times and they demand sacrifice. When reporters pressed Kilpatrick on his own excesses, he lost it. Hey, do it. Who is Carmen? The mayor and his staff weren't the only ones playing kill the messenger. Who could forget this anti-media plea his mother made during his second run for mayor? Despite the negative press, Kilpatrick surprised everyone as he inched past Freeman Hendricks to win a second term. One story that wouldn't go away and haunted both terms was the fabled Manoogian Mansion party. The never proven rumor alleged that Kilpatrick's wife assaulted stripper Tamara Green. We could never prove it. Couldn't find anything to substantiate it. And the more we looked at it, the more, the bigger the conspiracy required to make it real. Kilpatrick insisted it never happened. I want people to understand that I would never disrespect my God, my wife, or my children. As the scandal swirled, Kilpatrick fled to Washington, where he adamantly told us in an exclusive interview. I don't whore around on my wife, and I don't have wicked nude parties uh, at, at my house. He showed similar disdain when asked under oath about an affair with his then chief of staff, Christine Beatty. I, I think it's absurd to assert um, that every woman that works with a man is a whore. Words that would later come back to haunt him. This has been a very difficult time for my wife and my family. On live television, a contrite Kilpatrick wound up apologizing for the affair that had become evident from text messages. But what he did was more than embarrassing. It was a crime. We charge Kwame Kilpatrick only with perjury in a court proceeding. Kilpatrick later came clean and finally cut a deal. I lied under oath. His punishment? A million dollars in restitution, 120 days in jail, and he had to resign from office. On the way out, he made this infamous promise. And I want to tell you, Detroit, that you done set me up for a comeback. The text message scandal cost taxpayers millions, tarnished Detroit's reputation, and left many people angry at Kwame Kilpatrick. What I hear them say, Mr. Kilpatrick, is that you had everything and you could have turned the city around, and they feel like you let them down. What do you say to them? They're right. I mean, it's no long answer, but those people are right. Things went from bad to worse for Kilpatrick. He spent 14 months in prison for missing restitution payments and lying to the judge about his assets. Now, if he is convicted in this federal corruption trial that begins tomorrow, how much time is the ex-mayor looking at? Well, potentially for the racketeering charges alone, it's up to 20 years in federal prison, but it is up to the jury. All right. Thank you, Heather. Now, Kilpatrick did not go down alone. Some family members and close friends were also charged, went to jail, or suffered humiliating defeats. Two were Castec High School buddies who Kilpatrick credits for putting him in office at his first inauguration. They've been there from day one, and they'll be there at the end because what God has put together, <laughs> nothing can break apart. That was Kilpatrick more than so 10 much, years ago. Chris. Thanking Christine Beatty and Derek Miller, who ran his campaigns and would become high ranking aides. Miller has since been indicted, cut a plea deal, and is expected to testify against Kilpatrick. Beatty has left town. Others who have fallen include his mother, former Congresswoman Carolyn Cheese Kilpatrick, who lost her bid for reelection thanks to her son's scandals. His cousin, Nika Cheeks, was convicted of embezzling money from a fund that was supposed to maintain the mayor's mansion. And longtime friends, brothers Dedan and Candia Milton, played key roles in Kilpatrick's administration, but have since been convicted of taking bribes and are expected to testify against him. Just ahead. Are you really making enough money to, to afford all this? An Action News exclusive. You know, I knew Scott had to come in with something. Kwame Kilpatrick's lavish lifestyle. What's the arrangement? Are they helping you out with the car? The investigators on the prowl in Dallas, Texas. Plus. Y'all made me criminal. I wasn't a criminal for them. But his rap sheet says otherwise. Investigator Ross Jones uncovers new information about Bobby Ferguson. 
and one defendant threatening to expose more information about Kwame Kilpatrick in court. And you can track this case from the beginning on WXYZ.com. We've got a timeline set up. Just click the link on our homepage. I couldn't uh, think of a more perfect person to be my dad. God specially designed him to be my daddy. Kwame Kilpatrick there paying tribute to his father the day he resigned from office. Bernard Kilpatrick played a huge role in his son's rise to power, and the Fed say he cashed in on Kwame Kilpatrick's election. 7 Action News investigative Bill Proctor joins us now, and Bill Bernard Kilpatrick was known for much more than just a lot of flashy style and catchy nicknames. Bernard Kilpatrick often referred to his son Kwame as Michael Corleone, mobster from the movie The Godfather. And if Kwame is Michael Corleone, Bernard's critics say he always wanted to be The Godfather. In the audience for that first historic inaugural speech was proud Papa Bernard Kilpatrick, standing ready to embrace the words of Detroit's new mayor. Everyone is allowed to participate in the progress and prosperity of this city. So did Bernard Kilpatrick expect to personally prosper? For years, rumors swirled among businessmen to reporters who covered the city about contractors and how they had to go through Bernard's now defunct consulting company, Maestro Associates. We would ask them to come on TV and tell us about it so we could do a story. None of them would do it. They were all afraid of retaliation. Reporters say contractors told them off the record they feared that if they did go public, it would kill any chance of doing business with the city. It was soon after his son took office that Bernard left his job working for Wayne County to start Maestro Associates. Inside Suite 1300 in downtown Detroit's Penobscot building is where Bernard Kilpatrick established the address for Maestro, but we understand he was seldom here doing any business. The feds allege Bernard took in more than $600,000 in cash gifts and private jet trips to exotic places and then failed to pay income taxes on most, if not all of it. Bernard would not talk to 7 Action News for this story, but in a previous interview, he denied charges that he took bribes from contractors. Bribes? How can, I, how can they bribe me? I, I, don't, I, never, I don't work for the city. I'm a, I, I'm a private businessman, a consultant. But a group of black businessmen, members of AMO, the African-American men's organization, wrote checks to support Kwame's election after Bernard asked them, his fellow members, for help. But they all felt that the young Kilpatrick's election would lead to a better Detroit. Some, like Larry Mongo, say the opposite happened and that Bernard was expecting to do big business with white companies with Kwame in office. Mongo told 7 Action News that Bernard put it rather bluntly. Now that he won, we'll get all the white money we want. So who will the federal government bring to show in their case that Bernard Kilpatrick was a conduit for city bribes? Well, in January of 2009, Bernard told 7 Action News he really wasn't worried about that. Rats coming out the woodpile talking stuff now. The majority of people in this town know that the Kilpatricks have served this community. And what we know now, Carolyn, is that Bernard Kilpatrick eventually closed his consulting business and he lost his condo to foreclosure. Now, undoubtedly, this trial is going to cost a lot of money, so a lot of people want to know who's going to pay for Bernard Kilpatrick's defense. Unfortunately, it appears to be the taxpayers who will foot this bill. Wow, big money. All right, thank you so much, Bill. Stephen? The only one whose defense is not costing the taxpayers is Bobby Ferguson. And this isn't the first time he's faced legal trouble. 7 Action News investigator Ross Jones is here right now. And Ross, Bobby Ferguson has a bit of a reputation for playing rough. He certainly does, Stephen. Bobby Ferguson has said no to lots of requests for interviews, and he's made it hard for reporters to even find him. Well, for this story, he found us. How are you feeling right now going to trial? If you're wondering why Kwame Kilpatrick's been smiling lately, it may well be because of the man to his right. His friend Bobby Ferguson's already gone to war with the feds, and he's still standing. Kilpatrick's oh, yeah. hoping to pull off the same feat. The duo have been friends for more than a decade, and starting Thursday, they'll be braving the feds together. 
For Bobby Ferguson, courtrooms are nothing new. When he was a teenager, he was charged for beating a man in the head with a baseball bat outside a sports bar. DUI and firearm charges litter his lengthy rap sheet. By the time he was only 35, Ferguson had been arrested 12 times. Our transition team worked very diligently, led by Bobby Ferguson and Frank Torrey. That's Kilpatrick at his first inauguration. Right from the start, the new mayor was tapping Ferguson to help demolish more than 5,000 Detroit homes. The feds say Ferguson had unprecedented access to the mayor's office. Even so, in this 2006 deposition, Ferguson was cagey when asked if he and Kilpatrick were friends, dodging even his own lawyer's question. But if you can answer yes or no, whether you and the mayor are friends. I know the man. Ferguson cleaned up on city contracts under Kilpatrick, and text messages show that he, the mayor, and their friend, Chief of Staff Christine Beatty, strategized on how to get Ferguson even more. Why not Bobby in this? Beatty asked Kilpatrick. Bobby wants to strategically lose a major bid, he responded. City contractors complain that the fix was in at City Hall. It was the hottest rumor going, but it was very difficult to pinpoint. Difficult to pinpoint because contractors were afraid to speak publicly. One called me in 2005 saying he'd been awarded excavation work for the city. But at the last minute, he got a call telling him to leave the job site. Bobby Ferguson, he was told, would do the job instead. The Fed's first crack at Ferguson ended in a mistrial because of one holdout juror. But he wasn't so lucky years earlier. He pled guilty in 2005 to pistol whipping one of his employees. The attack put Ferguson in jail for 10 months. Today's federal charges carry a much longer sentence this time around. He's hired three high-powered criminal lawyers looking to make his record against the feds a perfect two for two. At the end of the day, uh, we're confident that we're going to be able to defend against those allegations and that our client is going to be found not guilty. But if there's anyone he hates more than the government, it's still the media. When we were shooting video outside his office for this story, Ferguson stopped by, demanding to know why we were there. I gave folks jobs and opportunities. I gave him something to believe in. Y'all yeah. took that from me, not me. When you say us, you mean the media? Y'all yeah. made me a criminal. I wasn't a criminal before then. He left without saying more well, than just a few words, but he had confidence to spare. Before leaving, he gave me a tap on the cheek, laughed, and walked away. Ferguson is facing 19 criminal charges, and despite his lengthy rap sheet, his lawyers insist he's a good Christian man devoted to his family. And that leaves the man who's considered the wild card in all of this, former Water Department head Victor Mercado. 7 Action News investigator Scott Lewis is here now, and Scott Mercado is threatening to drop some pretty big bombshells in this trial, right? That's what he says in court records, Carolyn. He also portrays himself as an outsider who has not profited a penny from this alleged criminal enterprise. Victor Mercado is the least known of the four defendants and maybe the most interesting from a legal perspective. Feds claim the former Water and Sewer Department director was knee-deep in the pay-to-play scheme, fleecing taxpayers by helping to rig bids on multi-million dollar water and sewer contracts. Some of those contracts went to Kilpatrick's pal Bobby Ferguson. But here's the rub. The feds don't have any evidence that Mercado ever got a dime in kickbacks. The feds say his motivation was to hang on to his salary, which at its peak was $240,000. Under the powerful federal racketeering statute known as RICO, it doesn't matter whether Mercado profited. All prosecutors have to show is that he was a willing participant in the alleged conspiracy, even if he didn't get any kickbacks. On the other hand, defense attorneys could paint Mercado as an innocent pawn who was just following his boss's orders, hoping jurors will have sympathy for him. In a text message, Bernard Kilpatrick referred to Mercado as the new Hispanic, which could suggest he was not part of the inner circle. All of the big players in the public corruption case, Kilpatrick, his dad, and Bobby Ferguson, were the targets of numerous investigative reporters' news stories long before they were indicted. Mercado was on the media's radar screen too, but not as much as the others. Were you surprised when Victor Mercado ended up in the group? I'm not sure I was surprised. Mm -hmm. Victor was always an interesting man to us as well because he pretty much packed up his bags and left overnight during the middle of uh, all these investigations and we always wondered why. I think we're about to find out why. In these court records, Mercado's defense attorneys paint him as an unwitting victim. They tried unsuccessfully to have him tried separately. They say his supposed role was so small compared to the others, he would be tainted in front of the jury. So how strong is the government's case against Victor Mercado? 
until people actually testify. You see the witnesses, you gauge their credibility, you see the exhibits that are admitted. It's very tough to indicate or, or to guess what kind of strength or lack of strength the government might have. Kilpatrick and Ferguson could be worried about what Mercado might say. Both filed motions agreeing that Mercado should have a separate trial. It's the interview you won't see anywhere else. I don't think that's any of uh, the, the city's business. Scott Lewis in Texas with new information on the mayor's lavish lifestyle coming up next. As Kwame Kilpatrick prepares to fight charges of corruption in Detroit, a whole lot of people are wondering about his lavish lifestyle in Texas and more importantly, who's paying for it? 7 Action News investigator Scott Lewis traveled to the Lone Star State to get some much needed answers. I've made the difficult decision, I believe the most difficult decision of my life, to step down as mayor of the city of Detroit. After Kwame Kilpatrick left office, he packed up the family and headed for Grand Prairie, Texas. You know, throughout the turmoil of 2008, not just in the city, but me and my wife, um, we wanted to find a place where we could heal. Kilpatrick says he decided on the Lone Star State after he and his wife sought counseling from Texas preacher T.D. Jakes. Texas is a place where a lot of people come for a new start, and so do we. A new start and some privacy. Kilpatrick can't walk a block in Detroit without a handshake or a shout out. But in Grand Prairie, Texas, few are familiar with the famous ex-Detroiter in their midst. His name is Kwame Kilpatrick. Ever heard of him? Never heard of him. Could you take a wild guess what made him famous in Detroit? Baseball? Shoot, I don't know. And what's his name again? Kwame Kilpatrick. Okay. I talked to these Texans in the lower income center of town where folks flock here to get five tacos for five bucks on Tuesdays. This is Kilpatrick's side of town, the outer fringes of Grand Prairie, where new subdivisions have popped up like desert wildflowers after a spring rain. Fashionable homes made of brick and stone and sprawling new schools. Some sections are a bit hoity-toity and therein lies the controversy for Kilpatrick. When he was in prison, his wife and kids lived in this somewhat modest home, but after his release, the family moved into this 5,000 square foot house, paying 2,600 bucks a month in rent. At the time, Kilpatrick was paying nearly twice as much for cable and internet as he was paying in restitution to Detroit. Prosecutor Kim Worthy ripped off this letter to the Corrections Department, accusing Kilpatrick of living a lifestyle that exceeded his reported income. She claimed Kilpatrick was, quote, once again hiding assets. Worthy claimed Kilpatrick was spending 2000 more a month than he was taking in. Well, I mean, a full investigation was done of that. It was seen that she was not right. It's been wonderful to work with the state people and not uh, the county. I think a lot of times people do things for political reasons around here. After Worthy's protests, the state did raise Kilpatrick's restitution payment from $160 a month to $500, and he's up to date on his payments. He's also current on his community service, working 16 hours a month here at the Tarrant Community Food Bank. But some still question how Kilpatrick supports his lifestyle. Records he gave to the Corrections Department in 2011 showed sporadic speaking engagements as his main source of income. Are you really making enough money <laughs> to, to afford all this? Oh my goodness. Um, you know, I knew Scott had to come in with something. You know, uh, you know, we make enough money to pay the bills, Scott. Uh, you know, just like every family in America, mm -hmm. we, we work hard. Uh, we, we work hard to make sure that we can do what we need to do for our children and ourselves. But does he really need this much house? 5,000 square feet, 2,600 bucks a month? Could the Kilpatricks live in the same area with a little less extravagance? I'm a reporter with Channel 7 News in Detroit. I called a local realtor who gave me a list of these four more modest homes in Kilpatrick's neighborhood and the same school district. All four bedrooms from two to 3,000 square feet, leasing for $800 to $1,000 less a month than Kilpatrick's home. That's money that could be going to restitution if Kilpatrick was willing to trim back his lifestyle. At the current rate of $500 a month, it would take nearly 143 years to pay off his debt. And finally, how does Kilpatrick afford two cars? This 2012 Jeep Cherokee with Michigan plates is not in Kilpatrick's name. It's registered to the Shrine of the Black Madonna Church in Detroit. That's something the ex-mayor doesn't want to get into. What's the arrangement? Are they helping you out with the car? Can you tell us? Uh, well, you know, uh, I don't think that's any of uh, the, the city's business. Uh, you know, everything that I do, everybody knows about. And we'll keep it like that, Scott. I mean, uh, I could tell you this. Uh, we get a great deal of help from a lot of folks because they know it's a struggle.
Well, Scott, Kwame says he's making enough to pay the bill. So what about Carlita Kilpatrick? Is she working at this point, helping out? Well, that's not really clear. At one point, Kilpatrick told corrections officials in an email that his wife was working, but he didn't give any specifics. And I found nothing in his parole file showing an income from Carlita Kilpatrick. And since Kilpatrick limited the time of our interview, I wasn't able to push him as far as I would have liked to on his finances. All right, thanks a lot, Scott. All right, as we've said, this trial is going to be long. It's going to be complicated. Investigator Heather Catala will be in the courtroom for every single minute of that. Now, the feds say Kilpatrick ran a corrupt organization and stole from the taxpayers. So how are they going to prove this case, Heather? Well, they have to keep it simple for the jury. The feds are going to roll this case out like chapters of a book that will highlight the story of things like the Civic Fund and the Water Department deals. But the defense says you haven't heard the whole story yet. And they feel, for example, that they can show some of those water department deals were canceled to save the city money, not to enrich the mayor and his pals. All right, thank you, Heather. Again, as Heather points out, this will be a long, it will be an explosive trial, and it all starts tomorrow morning. 7 Action News, of course, will be there every single step of the way with minute-by-minute -minute coverage on air and online of this historic event for our region. Coverage continues tonight on 7 Action News at 11. We thank you so much for joining us tonight.